Hey everybody, Coach Tanya, Holistic Health Practitioner here at Critical Bench. And today in this video, what I'm going to discuss is Alzheimer's Explained. So give you a little bit of information about some things that I have found in doing research and trying to find out as much as I can about this disease. So if this is something that interests you, please um, stay tuned and have a listen. Okay, so um, Alzheimer's, a topic very uh, near and dear to me, hits very close to home. And I spent the better part, well not the better part, that's not true, but I spent a lot of time, as much time as I can find in my spare time, to find out as much as I can about this disease because it's it's very interesting. There's, there's actually a lot of very new and hopeful uh, research that is coming up. Um, that I'm really excited to be able to share with you in upcoming videos in the very near future. So um, right now and today in this video, what I, what I want to talk about is give you know just have a conversation and explain a little bit of what I've learned about the disease and share that with you. Um, Alzheimer's is a neurological disorder and essentially brain cells die. Okay, and when this happens, it causes memory loss and a progressive cognitive decline because this is a progressive disease that worsens gradually over a number of years, anywhere from four to 20. Um, while we can't exactly say that if a person's been, been diagnosed on this specific date, that by a future specific date, this is exactly what we should expect to see. Not necessarily. There are definitely stages of the disease that we can identify with and um, you know, say that somebody appears to be in this stage of Alzheimer's because of behaviors and things that are presenting, symptoms that are presenting themselves. But it, it can progress very quickly in some patients and it can progress much more slowly in others. Um, but it is a progressive cognitive, uh, decline in cognitive function. And what, what happens or what we see is when a scan is done is that we see these plaques forming um, in the brain. And so that is just, a, think of it as like a hard substance, like a calcium, it's a, it's a hard substance. And think of it as a door between two rooms that, ain't, that nothing can pass through while it's shut. So you've got these hard plaques and what they do is they prevent cells from communicating or from mess, from, from mess, they prevent messages, pardon me, um, from, from transferring. So when the cells can't communicate and they die, um, a person essentially, uh, certain functions just begin to slowly taper off and, and things that once came easily no longer do and they lose cognitive function and actual physical mobile function as well. This is a disease that it impacts a person's memory, their ability to recall events, particularly recent events. It may make it very difficult for them in later stages to even recognize familiar people and objects. It can cause quite uh, noticeable dramatic changes in their personality, all of a sudden um, exhibiting outbursts of aggressive, you know, angry behavior, which could be completely out of character, but any type of out of character behavior um, whether it's extreme or not is just another symptom of the disease in later stages um, to the point that in the very last stage of the, like the very towards the end of this disease um, it can it can affect mobility where you know they're, they're in need of full-time care and really can't do much on their own for themselves um, so what we do know is that it can be identified in stages so there is seven stages total and um, the tricky, or not the tricky part, but um, it, with a disease like this, or if you're looking after someone and have a concern that there may be Alzheimer's present, you're probably wanting to get a diagnosis. You're probably wanting some answers because with answers, then you can do things or you know form an action plan as, as to how to best take care of this person, how to best support them, uh, how to best support yourself through it because it's, it's a very, um, it can become very exhausting, very sad when you're looking after somebody um, and gradually look going in, moving into a situation where you, you might be looking after them full time or having to put them in a situation where they are receiving full time care because that is now what they need. But the first three stages, even though considered part of the seven stages of Alzheimer's, those first three are considered not having Alzheimer's because their normal or their symptoms that normally or commonly may present in someone who's just getting older and getting a little forgetful. You know, um, 
our body and our minds at 20 are not the same as they are in our 80s and 90s. Um, we, be, you know, we can become more forgetful. It can, life can be a little bit more confusing as we get older and things slow down. So, out of the seven stages, you may be wanting a diagnosis. You may be feeling um, like there's something cognitively wrong or not quite right with someone that you love, who you're close to, that you're seeing changes in, but. Um, the first three stages, there's, a diagnosis usually does not happen. Um, usually diagnosis doesn't happen until about the fourth stage. And a doctor is going to do a lot of different tests, a lot of different things to measure and evaluate. Is there a progressive decline in cognitive function? What's going on? What symptoms are presenting? What are we seeing in scans that are done? It's not just a simple come into the office, ask a few questions and boom labeled with Alzheimer's or dementia. That's, that wouldn't be fair to anybody. Um, so it's not, it's something that is, is, you know, like, like anything with health taken seriously. And it's not quick to diagnose because there's a series of tests and a series of things that have to be taken into consideration and watched and tracked and measured. Now the seven stages are, um, no impairment. So while things may be happening inside the brain, that are related to and are going to eventually you know show that alzheimer's is present even though that may be happening there's no outward symptoms there's no changes in behavior there's really no significant memory loss or an inability to, to recall a person or, or or notice who they are or finding words okay there's just no outward symptoms that say mm, or that make us feel something is off um, second stage is very mild, so a bit of memory loss, you know, but again, it's not something to become alarmed with. Oh no, I can't remember where I parked my vehicle or I can't remember where I left my keys. You probably just forgot. You may have had a busy day and a lot on your mind, or maybe you're, you know, you're 89 and you just, you park somewhere you don't normally park and you can't quite remember. So again, um, not necessarily something to get excited about, but it is part of the stages as we continue through them. Um, the third being mild. So now an increase in memory loss and a little more noticing of mm, there's something, you know, dad or mom just, just seem a little bit more forgetful than, than usual. And that's kind of normally not like them, but again, nothing to set off any alarm bells. By stage four, um, it's considered moderate cognitive decline. So there's a little more significant memory loss. It seems to be a little bit more consistent in terms of progressing and, and getting worse. Stage five, moderately severe, again, just increased memory loss, increased forgetfulness, maybe starting to get a little confused and lost on familiar routes. Stage six is severe. A lot of things will become more challenging, um, dressing themselves, taking care of themselves, decision, decision making, um, se sequence of events, you know, to do, to, to complete a task, you have to go through these five steps in this order, could be very confusing for them. Um, you might notice heightened anxiety, um, some things like hand wringing, pacing, just patterns of behavior related to an increase in anxiety due to an increase in forgetfulness and confusion. And by stage seven, that's considered very severe. Um, it's not uncommon, it's more common than not that they will lose the ability to speak and communicate and to um, lose a lot of mobility, if not all of their mobility. And by stage seven, full-time care is usually required. Um, now, Stage seven can last anywhere from two to two and a half years. Again, there's really, I wouldn't even try to attempt to tell you how to measure that. That's something that a medical doctor would, um, that's, that's their job. But again, it, two to two and a half. Um, and at that point in time, they are in need of full-time care because um, simple daily tasks, looking after themselves, cleaning themselves, getting dressed, are just too much for them, okay? Um, well, there you go. It's kind of a Cliff Notes version of Alzheimer's Explained. There's tons of information out there. Uh, we have a lot more videos on this channel where I've talked about different, um, different things associated with Alzheimer's, so please check those out. Thank you so much for watching the video, and please share it with friends and family. If you did like it, give it a thumbs up. If you have any comments or questions, please put them down below because I do read those and I will get back to you. And if you haven't already, subscribe to our channel. We've got great videos here. It's fantastic content and information and resources for you to um, take a look at. And uh, again, thank you so much for joining me today and watching the video. My name is Tanya and I'm the holistic health practitioner here at Critical Bench, wishing you a wonderful, healthy day.